Hello, grade 11. Today we are going to do section 7.5. And those of you in my classroom know that you have two days to work on this section. Okay, solving quadratic equations by factoring. So first of all, we look at this example. We say, what value can we put in for the number n and the number of x to make this equation true? And so what I do is I have a number, 3x minus n to represent the number. Multiply it enough by another number to give me zero. Well, what do I know about their product? Their product must equal zero. So what I want you to do now is I want you to think of some pairs of numbers that have a product of zero. I could do three times zero. I could do zero times 75. I could go zero times 746. I could go 3,000 times zero. Well, what we notice is that in order for a pair of numbers to have a product, when you multiply them by x equals zero, one of them must be zero. Okay? So what I'm saying now is either this is zero, or this is zero, this whole number is zero, or that whole number is zero, or they're both zero. That's the only way they could multiply together to be zero. So what value of x makes 7x minus 7 equal zero? Well, let's solve it. 7x equals 7. x equals 1. Divide both sides by 7. So what? What values of n have to be? What does n have to equal to make 3x equal to 0? Yes, n. I'm solving for n. So I'm minus 3x on both sides. Okay, so that's important. That's why we set our factors to zero, um, so that we can determine what values of x make the statements true. Okay, we are on section 7.5, and we're going to do a problem that's in the textbook. So it'd be a good idea to grab your textbook. We're going to read over a solution. The entry to the main exhibit hall in an art gallery is a parabolic arc. The arc can be modeled by the function hw equals negative 6. 0.625 w squared plus 5w, where height, h of w, and width are measured in feet. Several sculptures are going to be delivered to the exhibit hall in crates. Each crate is a square-based rectangular prism that is 7.5 feet high, including the wheels. The crates must be handled as shovels, so completely upright. You can't put them on their sides to avoid damage to the fragile contents. What's the maximum width of a 7.5 high crate that can enter through the arc? So they're saying at 7.5 feet, how wide is it right there? A couple of things to notice, a couple of things that you should have noticed. Notice that this is a um, concave down parabola, and that the numbers of the square terms negative. Okay, so that's something that we saw before. So we're going to go through what our friend Brooke here did. First of all, she sketched it out. She said, well, there's going to be two points where it's 7.5, and that's where that width is. The crate can only fit through the part of the arc that is at least 7.5 feet high. The arc is high, that high at two points. So here she got her function, and she said, well, I want to know w when height equals 7.5. Then she wrote it in standard form. And you should remember that standard form means that there we make one side equal zero. Now she said, no, I don't like these decimals. I'm going to divide everything by 0.625 and see what happens. They give me w squared, 5 divided by 0 0.625 is 8. 7.5 divided by 0 0.625 is 12. And 0 divided by a number is just 0. Okay? And then she factored. And factoring is something that this chapter assumes that you know how to do. So it's not you ever review. We need two numbers that multiply to be 12 and add to be negative 8. Well, things that multiply to be 12 are 1 and 12, 3 and 4, um, 2 and 6. And similarly, the negatives of those numbers, negative 1 times negative 12, negative 2 times negative 6, negative 3 times negative 4. So those are our choices, but we have to choose two numbers that they add to be negative 8. Well, and that means that our only options are negative 2 and 6. So those are our two factors. We said in previous examples, in order for these two factors to multiply to be 0, either this factor equals 0, that factor equals 0, or they both do. So we're simply solving these. And she said that the parabola 
reaches a height of exactly 7.5 feet at widths of 2 and 6. Here we go. Here. Okay. Now what she did is she said, you know, I'm still learning the stuff. I'm not quite confident. I'm going to actually try graphing these. So what she did is she took her equation right here. Oh, not going to work for me. She took the equation we had here, 7.5 feet equals negative 6.25 w squared plus 5 w. She went to her graphing calculator and she graphed it. So she said, when y equals 7.5, and I made that a green line, and also when y equals negative 0.625 and 5x, where those intersect are going to be my answers. So on my graphing calculator, I can just point to it and it finds. On yours, you have to go second calculate intersection. But you'll notice that it intersects when x equals 2 and again when x equals 6. So that verifies that the work we did is correct. Okay, next up, determine the roots of the following equations. When I say determine the roots, I say what are the zeros? I'm also saying what are the values of p that were to correct? And then I'm going to verify. Okay, 75 p squared minus 192 equals zero. So the first thing I'm going to say is, okay, is there a common factor I can put up there? And I notice that both of these numbers can be divisible by three. And zero, of course, as well. So I get 25 p squared minus 64 equals to zero. And right away, you should see that this is a difference of squares. 25 p squared is a perfect square, and 64 is a perfect square. Now, and you should, have, should remember from factoring when you have a difference of squares, factored is the square root of the first one minus the square root of the second term. And then the other factor is the square root of the first term plus the square root of the second term. Okay? That's the difference of squares. We have a positive and a minus. And the reason we do that is we have the difference of perfect squares. Okay? Now solving for these, say either 5p plus 8 is equal to 0, or 5p plus 8 is equal to 0, or they both do. 5p is equal to 8, and p is equal to 6 right there. Here, 5p is equal to 6, p is equal to 3. Okay, so we found some answers. But now what we're going to do is we're going to verify these. We're going to double check that these work in our original equation. 75p squared minus 192. So we have to sum these in and actually double check. They work. Okay. So 75 times 8 is there. Squared of minus 192 equals 0. 75 times 8 squared is 64. 5 squared is 25. Oops. Before I expand these, I see that these can be simplified. 75 over 25 is 33. And 3 times 64 minus 192 is equal to 0. 3 times 60 is 180, plus 3 times 4 is 12. So 180 plus 12 is 192. 192 minus 180, 0, verify. So we verify the first one. Now we're going to check that the second group works. 75 times negative 8 squared plus 16 squared minus 192. That equals 0. Okay, 75 negative 8 squared is still 64. Second squared. Oops. Minus 192. Okay, I can see already I'm going to follow these exact same steps and I'm going to get those to equal. So I have verified that both of those solutions work. Okay, our next example I want to do is solve and verify the following equation. Uh, 4x squared plus 28x plus 49 is equal to 0. I'm going to show you a way to factor this that might be different than what you've done before. So the first thing you do is you make a box like this. I want you to put, oops, I want you to put the first term here. 
or x squared. And then what to do with the last term here. Okay. Now what we need to do is we need to find two numbers that add to be 28, that add to be that middle term, and they have to multiply, I should say add to be 28x, I just even forgot that, and they have to multiply to be 4 times 49, and 4 times 49 is 196, and we have x squared. Okay, so to find two numbers that add to be 28, and multiply to be 196. Okay. It's going to take some figuring here. So the way I look at this is I say, well, 196 is divisible by 2, um, it's divisible by 7, and 14. Well, wait a second. It's divisible by 14. 14, 14 is 28. So this is just trial and error, trying different numbers. So the two numbers are 14x and 14x, okay? What we do is we put those numbers here. It doesn't matter if they were two different numbers, which one we put where. Okay, what we do now is first of all, we look crosswise, we look this way. What's the biggest common factor we can take out of 2x squared and 14x? Well, I can take a 2 and I can take an x, okay? Next, let's look this way. What's the biggest? common factor I can take out of 14x and 49. Well, I can take a 7. And that's it. I can't take an x. Okay, similarly now we go down. What's the biggest common factor between 4x squared and 14x? Well, it looks like it's 2x. And what's the biggest common factor between 14x and 49? The biggest common factor is 7. And that's it. So now what I do in order to factor this guy is I just take my numbers along the side, 2x and it's a positive 7, there's no way it's on there, and 2x plus 7, and that's how I factor this. So that's kind of different than the decomposition you may have learned before. I find this way easier, but if you're used to factoring by decomposition, keep doing that if that's what works for you. Okay, so um, in this case, the factors are the same. So, we, so either this equals zero, either they have to both equal zero. So we can only just do this one. So 2x plus 7 equals zero. 2x equals negative 7. x is equal to negative 7 halves, or negative 3.5. And now it says we need to verify this. So to verify, we can put it in our graphing calculator, or we can substitute it in. I like substitution. Negative 7 over 2. Okay, I'm going to see that right here. If you're the one that's at any time, feel free to pause or to, um, to ask for something to be replayed. So I'm just substituting in the value I got for x just to make sure that that is going to be Zero. Okay, so I have 4 times 49 over 4 plus 28 times negative 7 over 2. Oh, come on, smart board. 24 times 0. Okay, these cancel out. I have 49 plus, well, 28 and 2, I can divide them both by 2. Is that a mistake here? And I get 28 divided by 2 is 14. I get 14 times negative 7. So negative 7 plus 49. There we go. 49 and 49 is 98 plus 14 times negative 7. That's a calculator. Well, you guys probably already have the answer. 14 times negative 7. Is a negative number. That's like 78 minus 98. 98 minus 98 is 0. We believe it. So I have verified that. Okay. Uh, going backwards, Tori says she solved the quadratic equation by graphing. She said the roots were negative 5 and 7. How can we determine the equation? So what she's done is she's given us the last step. Here's a better example where we've done it where she's told us what x equals. 
But what we're going to do is we're going to now work backwards. So she's told us that x equals negative 5 and x equals 7. So now let's get these to be 0. x plus 7 is 0. should be plus 5, but then we have to add 5 to both sides. Here we subtract 7 from both sides. So these are my two factors. The last step, we're just going to expand our FOIL. We should get x squared plus 5x plus 7x minus 35 equals 0. Uh, x squared minus 2x plus there's my equation there. Okay, so in this case, the language they used was a root. There's another way she could have worded that. She could have said the x-intercepts of a graph are 3 and negative 2.5. Same thing. What we're doing is we're saying x equals 3, x equals negative 2.5, setting these each to be 0, x So we have Matthew here. He's solving the quadratic equation as shown. Identify and correct the error. He said 4x squared equals 9x. He divided both sides by 9. 4x equals 9. x equals 2.25. Okay. The error that he made, he divided both sides by x. What he did is he eliminated the factor. So in general, you cannot, cannot, cannot divide by a variable. Okay. So correctly solving this equation, we should have factored out that x, set each factor to zero, and get his answer and verify. Okay? So the rule is do not divide by an x. Do not divide by any variable. It's not allowed. Okay, just to summarize, and then you have today and tomorrow to work on these questions, grade 11. So some quadratic equations can be solved by factoring. To factor an equation, write it in standard form. Standard form means it must have an equal zero on the side. You can set each factor to zero and solve the resulting linear equation. Each solution is a solution to the original equation. If the two roots of a quadratic equation are equal, then the quadratic equation is said to have one solution. A couple other things I want to add. Verify. Okay, on a test, you know if you have factored correctly and if you've solved it because you can verify. Okay, so to verify, you can substitute in an original equation. Other ways you can substitute is by graphing. Okay, so, and I mean, when you're doing your work right now, you're going to be checking the answer when it's verified, but it's not a bad practice to get in. It's not bad to keep verifying and double checking you're correct because this is one of those tests where you can get 100% very easily by verifying. Okay, good luck.